and now and now Puja Atman Shri Swami Jyotir Mahananji commences tonight's satsang with a Sanskrit peace chant. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti 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 We begin with mystic song by Sri Swami Lalitananda, played and sung by Sri Swami Umananda and Rajneesh. Our song tonight is called O Mighty Sage. Oh 
We are recording from the ashram of our revered Guru, Ujjay Atman Shri Swami Jyotir Mayananji in Miami, Florida. Today is December the 2nd, 12th, 2020, Saturday evening, and tonight Swamiji will be conducting a class on concentration and meditation. And now, Ujjay Atman Shri Swami Jyotir Mayananji. Om Brahmanandam Param Sukhadam Kevalam Gyan Murtim Vandvatitam Gagana Sadrisham Tattvamasya Dilakshyam Ekam Nityam Vimalamachalam Sarvadhi Sakshi Bhutam Bhavatitam Trigunarahitam Sadgurum Tam Namami Om Adoration to Sadguru who is Brahman, the giver of supreme bliss, embodiment of pure consciousness, one without a second, vast as the ether, infinite, eternal, beyond the three gunas and their modifications, the supreme preceptor. We begin with concentration exercises on slight projections. And you have before you Goddess Saraswati Devi, the Goddess who gives you an enlightenment, the presiding deity of your Ajna Chakra. So, and always understand the mystical meaning of her appearance. Swan is her vehicle. Swan, figuratively, look at the grace and the beauty of a swan as its source. More mystically, swan is hamsa. I am that, that feeling that reveals the truth. That's the swan. When that becomes your goal, life becomes saras. Life becomes full of sweetness. And she's seated on snowy white lotus. It's full of sattva. In her hands, she holds veena. Veena is bringing about melody in life of four chords. Jnana, intellect, bhakti, emotion, will, that's Raj Yoga, Dhyana, meditation, and karma, karma yoga, karma action, yoga of action. All four yogas, they are the strings of the Veena in the hands of Goddess Saraswati. On one hand displays the mala, the role of japa. Another hand displays scripture, the revelation of the truth. So with that in view, close your eyes and mentally visualize Goddess Saraswati. And in your heart develop a sense of profound love a sense of dedication to the Goddess. Next, open your eyes <coughs> while looking at a water lily. Your heart becomes, when heart is purified, it becomes like such a water lily. See the beautiful petals 
Your sentiments become like the petals. And who abides in your heart? Your very self, not the ego, the essential, that's Brahman. Closing your eyes. Next, open your eyes, <coughs> looking at a beautiful swan, unfurling its wings. Develop a mental visualization of soaring like a swan. Closing your eyes, and where are you soaring to? Soaring to the highest. <coughs> Follow an allegorical picture in your mind, as if you are soaring to the Mount Kailash, up on the top, <coughs> to commune with Shiva. Next, open your eyes You are now being led to this beautiful golden forest Autumn The trees have become all decked with yellow leaves Yellow golden leaves And allegorically mind becoming sensitive sees the world permeated by God and how does the world look like here is an allegorical picture everywhere there is the shining gold gold that is truth So closing your eyes, enjoy being in the forest, communing with the forest.
Next, open your eyes. You are looking at Mount St. Helen. During a time there was volcanic eruption. How can saints have eruptions? <laughs> this eruption is to explode the lower self, the forces of darkness. So with that type of vision, close your eyes and mentally visualize the immense power being expressed by Saint Helen as power is God's omnipotence Next, open your eyes, look, looking at a picturesque setting of nature, a mountain lake, mountains, lush greenery of the pine trees, and beautiful sky with soft clouds, and all this reflecting in the calm, calm lake. And it is allegorical presentation of your own personality. Develop a view of, of, of aspiring revelation about your own personality. Your mind stays like the lake. Mountains are your spiritual potentialities. The sky is God that permeates all and all this picturesque setting is your, your own personality, a divine temple. So with that, close your eyes and and place yourself in that setting and enjoy any particular angle of, of the picture. Next, open your eyes to an amazing picturesque scene of sunset. An allegorical presentation of experience of Samadhi. If God becomes the highlighted reality, all the mind's thoughts flow towards the shining orb 
and all the problems and adversities of your life, they become like colorful clouds, no, no, no longer negative. <clears throat> so with that in view, close your eyes Now place yourself by the ocean during a moonlit night. The moon is full moon. <coughs> An ocean is shimmering in the light of the moon. Here you are going to practice the divine presence permeating all. And you will be using a little of pranayam while breathing in. Imagine the surf is coming up towards you with a chorus of Om. The entire nature is singing the glory of God. And ocean is chanting Om. And the surf is bringing up a chorus of Om. And you are enfolded by the profound vibrations of divine love. And as you breathe out, feel that you are communing with the ocean. You are no longer individualized. With each breathing in, you are being enfolded by the chorus of all. Breathing out, the chorus recedes, but your soul proceeds to enter the ocean. And be lost in it. Om breathing in, Om breathing out. Now imagine, as a swan, you are being drawn to God, who is shining like the full moon, looking up 
towards the moon, unfurling your wings. Now commence your spiritual journey. Begin to fly, having a sweeping glance over the shimmering ocean and gradually rising higher and passing through layers of silvery clouds, going higher and higher until you are in the blue sky lit up with full moon. Now enjoy the shower of grace, God's grace, allegorically the nectarine rays of the moon. In three stages, for your physical body, for your mind and for your heart. First developed a highly profound view of your physical body. Don't view it as mortal body and all the details, but you are blessed to have a divine temple and that's your that's the body it's a temple that is alive and dynamic every piece of this temple is divine from toes to the head The nectarine stream of grace is coursing through your body and feel the divine feeling from the toes to the head, permeating every part of your body. It is the healing touch of grace. Now turn your attention to the mind <coughs> with an allegorical setting of beautiful mountain lake, calm, 
reflecting the sky. The sky has soft clouds. Along with the clouds there is full moon and twinkling stars. Think of the delightful condition of your mind and the contents of your mind are so divine. Calmer the mind, greater is the joy. Greater is the thrill of shower of divine grace. And try to see how calm your mind could be. No past, no future. That opens the door to the mystic presence, presence of eternity. The shower of grace is healing your mind of the injuries that you have sustained, of past memories, as well as your apprehension for future tragedies. You are enjoying the calm mind, steeped with the glory of God. It is mind inundated by the love of God. Now turn your attention to the heart center. Follow the allegorical picture. Your heart is like a cave. Cave that contains a lot of Memories, experiences based on your divine, based on your feeling, sentiments. Your heart is crowded, doesn't have place for peace. But now imagine 
<coughs> you are experiencing peace. <coughs> and a window opens in the cave of your heart. and divine grace emanating from the moon is entering through the window into your heart, into the cave of your heart. It is a practice of divine communion. Deep in the cave of your heart, you are communing with God. And communion is a revelation. You have been like a reflected sun apparently separated from the sun, apparently separated from God, wandering in a world process. Now, what a joyous experience. You are uniting with God. And in that union, there is a revelation that you are nothing but the God. Reflected sun is nothing but the sun. This is termed as, in a mystical language, you are diving into divine ecstasy. having enjoyed the shower of grace for your body, for your mind and for your heart. Now follow your journey to be united with the moon. There is a swan who come closer and closer <coughs> and become blended with the moon. The same divine communion you are experiencing with a different angle. As you become one with the moon, your heart undergoes a transfiguration. Your heart is filled with love of God and it begins to spill over. The spilling is goodwill for all. <coughs> Sarve bhavantu sukhina. May all be happy.
So imagine the moon showering nectar, nectarine rays, and in those nectarine rays, your goodwill is becoming identical with the nectarine rays. Your own goodwill, which is no longer yours, it is divine will. And that will is for the good of all. And you are melting into that divine self. But go in detail of this stotra. Sarve bhavantu sukhina. May all be happy. <coughs> is what this profound feeling does to your normal sentiments of your heart. Normal sentiments contain so much stress by constantly seeing pleasure and pain emanating from your near and dear ones and from the world around you. Now all this moves away and your heart has nothing but love for all. Because you are not looking at things backed up by your ego, but backed up by God within yourself. Sarve Sant Niramaya, may all be free of misery. Allow your mind to be flexible. Flexible means first turn your attention to your practical realities, people who are in misery and how you feel about them, your near and dear ones. But go in a sweeping process. They are not only, those people are not the only near and dear ones. The entire world, all life, all souls must experience the joy of divine love. and be free of pain, misery, sorrow, fear. Sarve bhadrani pasyantu is the highlight of your goodwill. May every soul discover, realize Aham Brahmas. I am that am I. And be absolutely free. Mukti. Nirvana. Be absolutely generous in your goodwill. May one 
everyone be enlightened to that extent that misery becomes only a myth, not a reality. Eternity becomes your reality. Immortality becomes your reality. Absolute joy. Follow a brief of Om Upasana. Mentally listen to the sound of Om proceeding from your navel. Here is a aspect of Om. And while you are involved with that melody of awe, develop a sense of physical expansion. Physically, you are always focused on your body that is just few feet and extremely limited. But as you enjoy the melody of awe, develop a sense of expansion. If I am the body, and body is inseparably related to the universe of matter, then I am also the universe. Universal body is like the ocean. Your body is like a wave in it. So therefore, I have both, both types of experience. Stay wave. At the same time, say goodbye to the wave. <coughs> goodbye to the wave and dive into the ocean of expansion. Open your mind to expression of immense joy that you are not only this body but you are everything that you see in this world. You are the mountains. You are the oceans. You are all the elements that go to form this physical world. Identified with body, you are known as Vishwa. Identified with the universal physical plane, you are identified, you are called Virat. That's the A aspect of Om. Now come to next level. You, at your heart center, Om is resonating in, at your heart center. Now, all you experience is in and through the mind. Matter doesn't exist. You are a mental body and you are called Taijas. And the cosmic mind is Hiranyagarbha. You are no longer individual mind. 
you are cosmic no longer you have to hunger and be thirsty for good news you are universal mind there is no news that's not already in use by you and turn to the last stage m om that aim om remains complete om but your focus goes from a to u coming to m that's at the agnya chakra you are causal body and that's the reality of your personality first reality you face is the physical second reality you face is the subtle mental and now absolutely causal om and it is absolutely void of all miseries and troubles of the world and lastly all the three being sublimated into just a melody windu and that's your causal plane your sasrar chakra thousand petal lotus of your consciousness open up and with this we now conclude with the chant of om breathing deeply no शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय ओम ऐं सरस्वत नम ओम ऐं सरस्वत नम ओम ऐं सरस्वत नम ओ प्रेयर फॉर शावर ऑफ करुणा मैर ऑफ ग्रेस ऑफ गॉड ओवर ऑल द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ Shakti, Bhakti and Mukti. Shakti is the deity of the Shakti, Durga Devi, at your navel center. The deity of Bhakti is Lakshmi Devi at your heart center. And Mukti, liberation, the Devi Saraswati at your Agnya Chakra. may you have the blessings of all the three devis om trayambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam urvarukum vabandhanan mrityor mukshyama amritat am sarve bhavantu sukhina sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashti dukk bhag bhavet ओम शांति 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 हरिओम तत्स